but some people have been dragged through the mud, so basically to the critical, who all, those who always find fault, nothing's ever right. Something always needs work. Jesus made a statement and said, hey, before you go about taking the toothpick out of someone's eye, pull the telephone pole out of your own. Jesus gave us the way to walk and act to, uh, to humanity. And it's not in cursing or condemning. It's in finding the best in each one. So kids, when you feel like talking smack, take care of yourself. Are right, you hearing what I'm saying? Children, you're all dismissed. All right, those of you that, um, and those that remain, no, I'm kidding. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Samuel, chapter 1. Glory to God. All right. I'm going to make a statement. I want you all to understand this statement. God brought his heaven, his, his blessings from heaven to earth. Jesus came to this earth and established, not only was there creative abilities that were left here with, with humanity, but he, he left us, what did he leave us here? His word. He left us his word, right? Are you all with me? The Bible, the words of God are here in this first heaven. I want you to understand that. Because His Word opens the door to what you can receive from heaven. The keys to your future are here and it unlocks what you have in heaven. Through the word that is here, you can be who God says you can be. By The Bible says that the blessings, He has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. The voice of the Lord, the empowerments, the anointings, and the power of the Holy Spirit are all present from heaven. What you have here are your talents, gifts, abilities, callings, energies, and auras, if you will. It's in this atmosphere. When you're operating here, you can do a lot. You got, you got shamans who do a lot of stuff right here. Moses' magicians matched the serpents. But then Moses' serpent ate up the other two. And the water turned to blood. And the curse of the flies and the frogs. Because see, we can, through the power of God, can supernaturally affect this atmosphere, this place that we live in. The power of God trumps any of the talents and gifts and energies that exist in this area. But this is where the Word abides. This Word that you live by unlocks heaven for you. This is why Jesus commended Peter because he said, the keys to the kingdom are yours. What kingdom? The kingdom of heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. Everyone say heaven on earth. Now, I need to say that because so many people think that this is God's word, I believe it, and that settles it. Well, that sounds commendable. 
I'm a word man. True, but what are you doing with the word? Are you just meeting your needs? There's people that really believe that. I just meet my needs. My needs are supplied. My needs are supplied. My needs are supplied. Wait a minute. Pray for the person next to you. Because it's not about just you. See, your prosperity is tied into, watch, what did Jesus say? Go out and preach this gospel. These signs shall accompany them that believe. He gave you supernatural power to reach the lost. Reaching the lost is tied to your prosperity. Because God wants you to prosper so that you can share all things in common. So that there are no needs within the body. But in order, can I tell you something? In order for there to be fresh water, you have to dig the, you have to dig the well. Digging the well is going out and preaching this gospel. Now, you know why it's so hard? The church isn't dead. I said the church is not dead. The church needs revival. You know what revival in the church means today? Because see, how long has it been since anyone, uh, since many, 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 many in the church, how long has it been since they want a soul to Jesus? A long time. You know why? Can I tell you, there's people, you know, listen. I've been meditating on some things. One to, in, in healing school, this was, you guys need to come to healing school. You get a lot of things answered. Jan, Danny asked a question of George, and George answered a question. Pastor George answered the question. And it had to do with the salva salvation and people who are saved. Now, I'm going to make a statement, and then I'm going to show you in the Word what I mean by this, but listen to me very carefully. There are a lot of people in the church who are not saved because here's what happens when you get saved. The, Jesus comes in and lives inside of you. His spirit lives inside of you. His spirit in you, watch, listen, his spirit in you changes you. You're a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. With that, the door, watch me, the door to you receiving your calling, your purpose comes with that. If you're in church and you don't know what your purpose is, check, your, check to see if you're in the faith. Check to see that if you're born again. Well, I've been taught. Well, you know, I don't care what you've been taught because we got to go back to the basics. And the basics are when you're saved, you do two things. You tell someone about Jesus. You pray, which is communicating with God, and you read the Word. You get to know Him relationally. All those, those three. If one of those is missing, check yourself to see if you're in a faith. Now, maybe because many got into the church during the 80s and 90s, and what happened in the 80s and 90s, everybody was a Paulinist. And in Paul, you don't get to study about going out and preaching this gospel. So consequently, what we have in the church is many people who don't win people to the, to the Lord. And they say, well, pastor, you're speaking like an evangelist. Paul spoke like an evangelist. Paul said, I'm a herald. Now, let me tell you something. If you have no vision for the future, and that vi or if you do, and all you're talking about is me, myself, and I, you're selfish, and you're not living for God. You're stuck right here. Well, preaching the gospel won't get me fed. Yes, it will. Because you're taking care of his inheritance, which becomes your inheritance, Psalm 2. Listen to me. Listen, i got to tell you something. You might think, ah, you know, well, this message ain't for me. I don't need it. You know what? Yes, it is. When was the last time you won a soul to Jesus? Listen to me. I'm going to tell you something. There's a whole world out there dying. Do you have any compassion for the world? Do you have compassion for it? Do you have compassion? Do you care? When the earthquake hits somewhere, you say, well, thank God it's not me. Roll over and go to sleep. Or do you pray for the people? They're hurting. If you don't, you don't have the heart of God. Let me say it again. If you don't, you don't have the heart of God. Are you after his heartbeat? Are you after what he wants for you? Well, you know, we have to live and breathe in this earth and we have to work. Yes, you do. But can I tell you, when you look around, sit at your desk, sit at your cubicle, sit at wherever you're at in your job, look around you and are, are the people born again? Your customers that come to you, are they open doors for you to preach the gospel to them? Yes, all of them. All of them. See, putting first things first is what he said. I'm leaving. I'm going away. And if I go away, I'm going to leave you someone, someone just like me. And he's going to tell you all about the things that my father tells me.